Welcome to the Purveyor Zone. My name is Ron Melendi, and I am the Cigar Purveyor, celebrating life, culture, camaraderie, and of course, cigars. Experience life's earthly pleasures here at the Purveyor Zone. Today is August 27th, 2019, and we are in State College, Pennsylvania, and we are all students, and we are here with certified master tobacconist Tony Grafari of your cigar den, home of the Nittany Blue White Cigar. Welcome to the show, Tony. Thank you, Ron. Thanks for having me. Well, this is great. It's been uh, it's been a while, but I'm finally back here and um, I'm putting together this new uh, podcast. And uh, thank you for being uh, what is the uh, or you know you are the first guest of my show. So thank you for that. Woohoo! Thank you. <laughs> so. Um, you know, as I stated before, we're here at uh, State College uh, in Pennsylvania, and um, tell us a little bit about the uh, about your cigar den, how it got started, uh, and what's special about the uh, about the shop here at uh, State College. Well, the shop's been around for 15 years now. Um, it was named Your Cigar Den. It was opened in 2004. Russ and Patty Keller started it. It was Russ's retirement gig. And uh, Patty would come and help out on, uh, I guess, Thursdays and Saturdays and, and any events or whatever. And uh, it, it did well. It did okay. We had a, a clientele of, of mostly retired guys that uh, Russ really considered his friends. They would come in here and they provided cigars for anybody who was driving by or lived in town or whatever. And uh, unfortunately, Russ passed away uh, five years ago. And when that happened... I had been a regular for about six years, been coming to the shop uh, pretty much every Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Right, right. And uh, Patty basically uh, said she thought I'd be a good uh, fit for buying the shop. And I had talked to Russ in the past about buying it. And uh, one thing led to another. And uh, I wrote a check and I own your cigar den. Nice, nice. And here we are. Well, it was more complicated than that because I have zero retail experience. Anybody who knows me knows I came from the realm of uh, technology and communications. And uh, my only experience with cigars, cigar shops, and retail is as a customer. Right, right. So my only footprint was, what would I do? Not, Not paying attention to cost, not paying attention to you know things that people look at like KPIs and and bottom lines and P and Ls, I just did what I thought needed to be done, and uh, five years later I I think we we have a good shop. I I didn't go overboard, so we're making money. We're selling a lot of cigars, a lot more than I thought we ever would. Well, that's good. It's good to make money. So you're going to be here for uh, for a long while. Yeah, that's up to the FDA. That's another that's another podcast. Yes, that's that is another podcast for sure. Um, you know, one thing that I uh, that I see being on the road, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a uh, cigar broker by trade. Uh, been in the retail business for a long time as well. Uh, but I see a lot of people open shops and they run shops a little differently. You know, what I like about your cigar den and what I every time I, I come through town, I see that you guys um, have events. You're very active in promoting the store. Um, you even have trivia nights, I think once a week. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your methodology. What makes you stand out from, from the other shop? Well, we don't try to sell cigars. We're a community center. That's how I look at it. We, uh, start the year off and, and we do, you're right. We do trivia every Monday and there's no cost. You come in, it's free. It's BYOB. You buy a cigar, you don't buy a cigar. We give away a $25 gift card, $15 gift card, and $10 gift card for first, second, and third place. And uh, people get to know each other during trivia, right? That competitiveness of the trivia, whether you're competitive or not, brings conversation in after the fact. The camaraderie. Yes, but, right. 
and as people start talking or whatever, they get to know each other and, and they, they become friends. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we do a chili cook-off contest. Again, the only charge for that is you buy a cigar and then that cigar gets, I match that cigar with another one. So we'll have 10 entries. We'll get 10 cigars. I'll put another 10. The winner for second, third place gets 30 cigars. And then they get uh, their name on the plaque and then they get a spoon that says first, second, or third place. And then we do a mac and cheese cook-off. Uh, most of our events are not your traditional selling cigar events. And that's because I hated, some of you guys that are a little bit older remember Circuit City. You walked into a Circuit City and you have four salesmen wrapped around you, following you around, can I help you, can I help you? And people just don't want that. People, that's the, true. From the moment you walk into a cigar shop, you want to feel relaxed, because the reason you come in here, cigar smokers don't have a nicotine habit. Cigar smokers run like cigarette smokers, that they gotta have that hit, they gotta go outside, it could be five degrees and raining and snowing and sleeting, they're still gonna take that cigarette hit. Cigar smokers do it because they wanna relax, and you need to set that stage immediately. The moment you walk into the shop, you need to just start, so to speak, letting your hair down. And, and that's been my approach. Uh, we do big events, uh, Havana Fest is gonna be one of them, the 12 Days of Christmas is another one, if you come in, you want to introduce a cigar, we'll do a big, big event because we're introducing the cigar. We want to get it in people's hands. We want to discount it. We want to give away swag, give away stuff. Um, a lot of cigar shops think the event is to make the money. And I don't believe in that. I, I believe the event is to get people together to have a party, to have them try something new. And then hopefully over the lifetime of that customer, you make money. If you do it correctly and you, and you, Create that sense of camaraderie and that, uh, and bring, you know, bringing people together. The money in the business will come. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you had mentioned something uh, just a second ago, Havana Fest, uh, which uh, is supposed to be um, something new to this area. Um, oh, it definitely is. Not supposed to be. <laughs> it sounds. It sounds like a, a, a great event. Um, so uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Havana Fest, how it got started and, uh, and so on? I can. So about three years ago, I went to one of the other big fests uh, and, and there were so many people there. Like as, as a retailer, I know all of you guys pretty much because most of you guys are my reps and, and you're out there handing out cigars. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to sit down and have a little conversation or whatever, but there were so many people and it was so full, it you couldn't do that. You, I, I basically felt like I was cattle. So I said, you know what, State College, small town, it's right in the middle of central Pennsylvania. There's not a whole lot um, around here that, that people can do, you know, big event wise. It is not a very diverse community, although they're trying, they're, they're working really hard on, on being as diverse as possible. Um, I, I'd like to do something. I, I have a Cuban background like you do. So my mom's Cuban, grew up in, in, well, I grew up in a lot of places, but I, I, I spent a lot of time in Miami. And uh, one of the things that I did changing uh, subjects a little bit is I had a stand at the county fair and I, I ran that for 10 years. It was a restaurant and we did Cuban sandwiches and we did empanadas and people loved it. And we went from, what's that? To a, to a pretty solid following where we'd sell at least 100 Cuban sandwiches and 200 empanadas a day. Uh, so I felt like I wanted to bring that into, into central Pennsylvania. I started, like I said, three years ago when I first bought the shop for our Christmas party, I would make a very traditional Cuban dinner. It was roasted pork, white rice, black beans, uh, yuca, which is cassava in English, uh, sweet plantains, uh, the magic mojo with the sliced onions, and everybody loved it. And every year I would ask, what do you guys want me to make? And everybody would say, oh, don't change it, same thing. So I coupled that with cigars, with some Latin music and dancing, and we're just gonna throw a big party. Um, it just so happens to be that since I own a cigar shop, there's gonna be a lot of cigars. Yeah, speaking about the cigars, that was my next question. Um, who's gonna be present in terms of the vendors and and the uh, and any other thing that might be at the event, you know, in terms of what's gonna be there? Well, th there's gonna be a lot of vendors, and to be honest, I'm trying to pull up the list here because there are so many that I do not want to forget anybody. But absolutely, we're going to introduce not only to the shop, we will have a Fonseca cigars there, and uh, that'll be your people. <laughs> you, yes. <laughs> you, and by your people, I mean you, you. <laughs> you. You're the one that's gonna be doing that. Yes. Um, and then we're also going to have Lotus, and we're gonna have accessories from Lotus. But in addition, 
as far as individual uh, cigar brands, manufacturers, we're looking at Monte Cristo, Romeo and Julieta, uh, CAO. Uh, CAO will have the, the new session. A lot of these, we haven't decided which cigar we're going to have yet, but they're going to be uh, premium cigars. We're, we're not doing any bundles. We're not doing any unknowns. No, the, the, the only boutiques we're doing is like the ones that are not boutiques, like Casada Cigars is not a boutique. Some people don't know them. They think they might be. Um, McAuliffe, they're the original boutique company out there, right? Right, right, absolutely. Uh, Macanudo, Drew Estate, uh, Ashton, which is actually um, La Gloria Cubana, La Roma de Cuba, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Mark Goldacker. Alec Bradley, Every, everybody throws the word Cuba and Havana and all that in there, it gets confusing. Uh, I get it. Ventura Cigar Company with Dream Ho with their uh, Dream State uh, and Archetype Series. Uh, that's been a huge seller for us. Oliva Cigar, Perdomo, Rocky Patel, La Flor Dominicana, My Father Cigars, Leaf by Oscar, DBL, uh, Balmoral, Nat Sherman, JC Newman, AJ Fernandez, Fonseca Cigars, Michael Cigars, which I mentioned, uh, Arturo Fuente. And of course, there, there's going to be uh, some of our Letterman and Disney cigars. Very nice, very nice. It's, I mean, it sounds like an incredible event. I mean, you know, being a, of a Cuban heritage and and seeing the, uh, the the manufacturers and vendors that will be there, as well as the food that, that will be there. And I, and I take it you're going to have music and all that as well. We're going to have at least two different live performances, and we're going to have a DJ. Uh, we're going to have, right now we're planning on several dance groups. We're waiting to, to finalize that. And they're uh, salsa, samba, Latin kind of dance. So you're not awesome. going to have to dance. They're going to dance for us. Yeah, well, you, well, you know, we want to keep the people there. We don't, I mean, you know, maybe if it's time to go and, you know, if you need to get people to I leave. am fairly certain that if I put you in one of those samba outfits <laughs> at 6 o'clock, we're clearing that place out and cleanup will be a cinch. In one minute. <laughs> um, so... Um, how do people um, find out or, I mean, where do they go to get a ticket, to sign up and that sort of thing? Well, I feel like if they haven't heard about it yet, they live under a rock and they probably don't right. smoke cigars. <laughs> um, it, pretty much all major uh, cigar shops have a poster up in the Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, Ohio areas. If they don't have one, I'm sure they've seen it from any one of the 19 manufacturers putting it on their, on their uh, social media. If not, Cigar Journal had an article on it. We'll see it on Cigar Snob and Cigar Aficionado here soon. But to make it easy, HavanaFestPA.com. If you go to HavanaFestPA.com, there'll be a link in there uh, which tells you all the different stuff that's going on. It'll take a link to the Buy Your Ticket on Eventbrite, which has a very detailed list of, of what, what's going on. And uh, then in the bottom, there's also a, a link to rent a hotel room. And uh, we have a big concert in town that night. So everything will be booked. We, we and will, you have a special rates at the hotel? We do. It's $99 a night. And uh, people are going to look at the days in and say, ew, it is actually rated the best, ba the best days in in the world by days in. So they got the award for the best days in on the planet. Well, that's, uh, that's comforting. Yeah. My that's guess, awesome. Yeah. My guess is, and you know how I like to spin words, it, if there's only days in here, isn't it like the best days in in the galaxy or the universe? Yeah, I, yeah. I guess maybe, so. maybe they said world because they know something we don't. Uh, I did want to mention that there's three different tiers of ticketing. So we have a general admission ticket, which is 50 bucks, and uh, you don't get any cigars with that. You get to roll a cigar and keep that cigar, but that's it. Then for 125, we have the aficionado level, level, which it gets you the food, it gets you the dancing, the music, the entertainment, roll your own cigar, all that stuff, uh, plus at least 20 cigars. And then the connoisseur, which is the one that's selling, actually we have oversold it already, and I keep working with the vendors to make sure that that it's not too many people. Um, one of the things that started that was I wanted to make sure that all of the people attending would be able to have one-on-one -on -one time with the rep of their favorite cigar. And I, I want to make sure we don't have more than four or five people to every one rep because it's a it's a private lunch. You come in two hours in advance. You come in at 11.30. Their main event starts at one. Okay. So I'm not really good at math. Clearly that's an hour and a half and not two hours. <laughs> so you come in at 11.30, you check in uh, a block away from here and uh, there will be a uh, private lunch uh, Spanish tapas, plenty of food. So when you hear tapas, don't think tiny little plates. There'll be plenty to go around for everybody. 
Um, I'm getting hungry already. Yeah, I'm, we're going to breakfast after this, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then you can you can deal with with the vendors one on one, ask questions, talk whatever. But you also get a two ounce pour of free for free, not not because you bought a ticket of Cuban rum, actual Cuban rum, not Havana Club from Puerto Rico, not something that says Cuban esque, but Havana Club made in Cuba. And you also get a Cuban cigar. Also free, not part of the ticket, because as you know, we can't sell those. Wow, wow. So, so, but that's only available. That rum and the Cuban cigar is only at the at the special at dip. the connoisseur level. The connoisseur level, yeah, which the, is the highest. The morning, yes, and, the highest level. and it and you get another five cigars on top of that. So, if you're a connoisseur level, you get an additional meal, you get an additional five cigars, you get the Cuban rum, you get the Cuban cigar. And you get to hang out with whoever, whichever vendor, or all, or all the vendors. And wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, this event sounds incredible. I mean, from what I understand, you're closing down uh, a street or a block or something. How how difficult was it to to get the permits to do this? So there, well, since this is going to be public, I'm going to say not difficult at all. The Borough State College was very easy to work with. Understood. <laughs> it took three months, though. Right. Like, hey, hey, anything worth doing is going to yeah. take some time and effort. So th- I, I don't know if we're going to be able to do it next year in the same place. I, I believe it's going to grow and will outgrow that space. Uh, I want to make it more like a tradition. So so I, I grew up in New York City. I know earlier I said Miami, but I went from New York to L.A., L.A. to Miami, so give me a break I grew up in the, the three the three major cities but I was up to 13 years old I lived in New York City that's where I was born and we had block parties and when I say we had block parties like they would close off the streets not because anybody helped us close off the streets but people would park their cars and close off the streets and you had the fire hydrants open and everybody would bring out food and everybody would play music whether it was blasting the car stereos or whatever and and I want to do that in in not the 70s style like we did it back then, but more in the 2019 <laughs> no, style. 2019 style. And uh, of course, there's some regulatory issues. So because we're going to have wine, we're going to have beer, which is included with the tickets. We have to have a four foot fence around the area mm-hmm. and it's a white picket fence. So that looks goofy, but uh, I think it'll be a good time. It'll be a traditional block party type of thing. So we're talking uh, Cuban or Spanish, Latin food, wine, beer. Oh, 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 it's back up. So, so Spanish food for the connoisseurs, which will show you the stuff that inspired the Cuban food. And then the main event will have 100% traditional Cuban food. So it's not Latin, no mix, no fusion. It's, it's what your grandmother and my grandmother used to make. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. So, so what's next for uh, Tony in your cigar den? Sleep. <laughs> September twenty second. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, so uh, the date is September twenty first. Yes. yes, September twenty first. State College, Pennsylvania, uh, home of Penn State University. There is no football game. There's no other major event except a uh, country music concert later on in the evening. Starts at eight or nine o'clock. So it lets gives you plenty of time to get in town park we have two huge parking decks Uh, they hold several hundred cars each so that shouldn't be an issue we have uh, like i said uh, a bank of rooms at the hotel down the street which is literally a block and a half away so you can stagger over there once once our party's over you can walk downtown have a bunch of drinks and stagger to your hotel and it'll be good and they have parking too wow awesome i'm looking forward to uh to seeing you again on uh the 21st of September. Tony, thank you so much uh, for doing this, uh, for being on the uh, on the Purveyor Zone, and uh, I hope to do more of these with you in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Something I noticed that you uh, strategically failed to mention at the beginning is you are also a certified master tobacconist. Uh, that is true, uh, but uh, this podcast was uh, more about you than me. I, I also just wanted to say that, the, the, you know, we talk about the party or whatever, the, there will be 200 people there. So it's not, a, it's not a little cigar shop doing something with 15 people. I mean, we're closed, like you said, we're closing down the street, we're closing down the plaza. It's a huge area and uh, it's going to be a big deal. It's not, not just another cigar shop plugging in just another event. Awesome. Again, thanks a lot and have a great day. You too, brother. Thanks. All right. Thank you. <laughs>